Hello, and welcome to the Boston Virtual ARTCC's guide on how to install and set up the Consolidated Radar Client, or CRC, for controlling. My name is Dan, and I'm one of the mentors here at BVA. Today, we will discuss the setup and use of CRC, the use of VTDLS for PDCs, the use of VStrips, signing into the network as an observer, using audio for VATSIM, and setting up VATIS. Before we begin, we will have to download all the programs that we will need for today. The first program we will need is CRC, which can be found at vnas.vatsim.net slash CRC. Once on this page, press the download button. The next thing we will need to download is audio for VATSIM, which can be found on audio.vatsim.net slash docs slash home. Once we are here, we can go down to the ATC, click CRC, and in step two, you will see download and install the audio for VATSIM standalone client. We can click on that. The next thing we will need to install is VATIS by going to docs.vatis.cloud.io. Then we can click on the download button in the center of our screen. Once here, we can find the most recent version and press download VATIS, which will install the installer. The next thing we will need to install to accompany VATIS are the VATIS profiles, which can be found on the ATC hub. Under controlling and controller resources, we will scroll down to VATIS profiles and press download. Once all of these applications are downloaded, we will find them in our downloads folder on our computer. The first thing we will be setting up is CRC, which can be set up just like any other application. Since I've already had it installed, I will move right to opening it. The first thing you will need to do is come down to Manage Installed ARTCCs. We can click on that. Now, we are in Boston ARTCC, so we're going to press the Install button next to Boston. Depending on your internet speeds, this may take a little while. And once you have this installed, you'll see Installed right below Boston ARTCC. We can press the X button. Now, we're going to create our first profile by clicking the New Profile right at the bottom. Now. Keep in mind for this tutorial, we're going to be creating a Bradley Tower profile by using a stars and Aztecs window. This tutorial can be easily tailored to control ground or even clearance or higher positions. We will just be going over the basics of setting up CRC. Feel free to set it up however you feel would help you best. The first thing here where it says specify the settings under ARTCC, we're going to click that and click on Boston since we are in Boston. The next one is the facility. We're setting up Bradley Tower, so I'm going to come down to Bradley ATCT. Display type, our first display is going to be the ASDEX window. So I'm going to press ASDEX. And the profile name, you can name this whatever you like. I'm going to name this Bradley ATCT. And then we can press Create Profile. Once we press create, we'll be on a blank slate here with an ASDEX. I'm going to full screen this just so you can see it. Now, I can rearrange these menus however I would like. The messages window, which will show your text communications on frequency, you can place anywhere. I'll be placing it in my bottom corner, and I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit. This window is the controllers list. It can be toggled with control and L as in Lima to hide and unhide it. Speaking of the messages window, you can hide and unhide it by pressing the tab key on your keyboard. Alright, I've just gone, gone ahead and rearranged the profile to my liking. The next thing that we're going to do is create a stars window in this upper right hand corner to see our aircraft on final. To do this, we can come to the hamburger menu in the top left hand corner, click it, and click new window. This can also be made by pressing Ctrl N as in November on your keyboard. Next thing we're going to do under display mode is set it to stars. The facility is Bradley. The initial area is Bradley Tower. And the position, as we stated before, is Bradley Tower, so we're going to click on local control. Keep in mind this can be adjusted to whatever position that you are actively controlling. Then we press add display. Keep in mind that in this tutorial, I will be only going over the basics on how to remove these lists in the stars and add the map. But if you want a more in-depth guide on the stars windows, you can use the CRC documentation under the stars tab to see what you'd like to do. So 
I'm just going to full screen this so we have a better view of how our stars window looks. The first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is remove these lists on the side panel. To do that, I'm going to press the F7 key on my keyboard. Then I'm going to press T as in Tango and press enter. The next one, I'm going to press F7 again, C as in Charlie, I'm sorry, T as in Tango and then C as in Charlie and press enter. The next is F7, T as in Tango, V as in Victor, press enter. The next one, F7, T as in Tango, M as in Mike, press enter. The next one, F7, P as in Papa, the number 1, and then press enter. And the last but not least, F7, T as in Tango, N as in November, and press enter. Now we have a nice clean scope. The next thing I'm going to want to work on clearing up is this top left hand SSA window. To start cleaning this up, I'm going to actually show the winds because I like seeing the wind of the airport I'm controlling. To do this, I'm going to press Ctrl D as in Delta on my keyboard and press show winds in SSA. Then I can exit out of that. To clear out some of these panels, I'm going to go to my top DCB. I'm going to go over to SSA Filter and click on that. I can adjust this to my liking, but I'm going to remove everything except for the airport and the winds. I can close out of that, and as you can see, we are left with Bradley, the altimeter, and the wind. One thing I forgot to do if we come back to SSA Filter, we can add our altitude filters. What this is going to do is this is right now set so we can see aircraft all the way from the ground all the way up to infinity. When we're working local, we don't need to do that. Here at Bradley, our initial altitude is 4,000. But for situational awareness, I'm going to set my maximum altitude as 6,000. To do this, I'm going to press the F7 key on my keyboard, followed by F as in Foxtrot, and I'm going to start entering my filters. Immediately after this, I'm going to press 0, 0, 1, which indicates the ground, and my top altitude, which I said 6,000, as 0, 6, 0. Then, I'm going to press the space bar on my keyboard and type the same thing, 0, 0, 1, 0, 6, 0. Then, I can press Enter. As you can see, it was added successfully to my altitude filter. I can come back to my filter and press altitude filter to remove it. Now, as you can see, we can't see anything in our stars window yet. So, to add a map, you can come up to the top left corner and you can see we have four different configurations here at Bradley. In our example, we're going to be running the 633 configuration, so I'm going to press on the tower map that is 6 and 33. As you can see, my map appears. I could zoom in a little bit as I'll only be controlling tower to see my two final lines. Now, in case I want to make this a little brighter, I can come to my DCB right at the top, click on Bright, and to set this first map a little brighter, I'm going to go to MPA and click it and use my scroll wheel to increase and decrease the brightness. Once I have it set to something I like, I'd also like to decrease the brightness of my compass that goes around my screen. So I'm going to come to CMP and just decrease that a little bit to my liking. Then I can press done. Now, since we have our stars window configured, as I said, this stars window is going to go in the top left corner of our ASDEX. So I'm going to resize it and position it to our top left corner. And then I'm going to use the arrows here in the scaling to scale it down to where I'd like it. So I'm going to scale it up and then to the right. This looks like a good size. Keep in mind that you can position the stars window however you would like. This is how I'm going to do it. Now, as you can see, the DCB takes up a little bit of room. Since we are done using it for now, if we press the Control F8 on our keyboard, that'll clear out the DCB. To make some more room, I can press Control and B as in Bravo to remove the taskbar at the top. 
You can do those same hotkeys, Control B and Control F8, to add and remove them as needed. A good rule of thumb once you finish configuring to your liking is to press Control S as in Sierra to save your profile. This can also be done by going to the hamburger menu in the top left hand corner and pressing save profile. Press yes. Now I'm going to show you how to connect to the network. Keep in mind that for this tutorial, we will be connecting to the Sweatbox environment. Do not connect to the Sweatbox environment unless told to do so by your mentor or instructor. To connect to the network, I'm going to go ahead to the top left hand corner again to the menu and press connect. This menu can also be brought up by pressing Ctrl and F12 on your keyboard. Now, you will have to configure this for your first time opening CRC. We're going to press yes and we're going to enter our CID, password, and our real name. I've gone ahead and entered all my information and then pressed the X in the top right hand corner of the general settings window. And now I'm greeted with the connect to VATSIM menu. To connect to VATSIM, I have to set my position. In this case, for this example, we're controlling Bradley Local Control. Next, my role. I will be controlling, so I'm going to press controller. Keep in mind that if you were connecting to the network as an observer, make sure to set observer. My rating will be my VATSIM rating, and the environment, which will be live, which is connecting to VATSIM, Sweatbox 1 and 2, which are for training purposes, and the test server. Please do not connect to the sweatbox or the test servers unless told to do so by a mentor or instructor. In this case, I'm going to be using sweatbox2, and I'm going to press connect. As you see, we are greeted with our planes. You can see here, shown by the blue dots on the ASDEX. And we can confirm our connection by seeing in our controllers list that we've appeared, local control, in blue. Please also keep in mind that the ASDEX window can only be accessed at three of ZBW's airports, Boston, Bradley, and Providence. In all other airports, you will have to use a tower cab window. To do this, we can come up to the top left-hand corner of our menu. We're going to add a new tab, not a new window. Our display type is going to be tower cab, and we're controlling Bradley. I'm going to press add display. As you can see, we now have a tower cab window showing the ground here at Bradley, just as seen as in our Aztex, but we can see everybody. This tower cab view will be used at airports other than Boston, Bradley, and Providence. But at these three airports, controllers are expected to use the Aztex window when available because of the features it offers beyond the tower cab view. This will be covered further in your initial training. Now, when we are ready to start controlling on the network, or in this case, training, since we are in the sweatbox, we have to first activate our session. To do this, I'm going to go up to the top left corner again and press activate session. This can also be done by pressing control, shift, and F12. Please do not activate your session until you've obtained a briefing from your overlying controller or been given the OK from your mentor or instructor. The next thing we will move into is setting up the sub applications for controlling, such as vstrips and vtdls. Keep in mind that vstrips is used at every single one of our airports, while vtiddles is only used at Albany, Bradley, Providence, and Boston. You will not be able to access VTDLS at any other facility. All right, to set those up, I'm going to come back to my browser window. I'm coming right back to the CRC page that I was on, but this time I'm going to click VStrips right in the center of the screen. To open up VStrips, I'm going to press the launch button. Once I've launched VStrips, I'll be greeted with a login window. I'm going to switch this to Sweatbox 2 since that's what I'm currently connected to and press login with VATSIM. And as soon as I've logged in, I'll see a list of facilities and I'll see the position I am actively controlling. Since we're controlling Bradley Tower, of course, we're gonna select Bradley. Now, since we're controlling Bradley local, we're gonna go to the local control play or Lima Charlie to see local control separators. If you were controlling ground, you would be on the ground control bay. Please keep in mind that per the general SOP, 
page 52 under the strip section, you may not add, remove, or edit any of the typed separators. So, these typed separators are here as prescribed in the general SOP listed here, and I cannot change or amend these. In vstrips, what I can do though, is rearrange the separators. I can use utilize the second bay if I'd like to, or I can leave them all in one bay. If for any reason I wanted to add my own strip, I can right click, add separator, handwritten, and type in whatever I'd like the separator to say. Please keep in mind, to remove your handwritten separator by right clicking and pressing delete before you leave your session. Now, the next application we will need to use is VTDLS. Again, as stated before, VTDLS is only accessible at Albany, Bradley, Boston, and Providence. If you are at any other airport, these instructions do not apply to you. We will come back to the VNAS website that we were just on, and in this case, we're gonna press VTDLS. Then, we can press Launch. Keep in mind that you have the ability to bookmark both VTitles and VStrips in your browser window for easy accessibility in the future. That setup procedure is similar to VStrips, we're gonna switch it to Swapbox 2 where we are, and press Login with VATSIM. Then, we're gonna get the same menu showing our current position where we can select a facility. In this case, we're at Bradley, so we're gonna select Bradley. Now, this window does look a little confusing at first glance, but we will go over it in basics right now. First things first, I want to arrange these on my screen so I can still see my CRC window that we've set up before. So, for this, I'm going to move my CRC window to only cover about three-fourths of the screen. I can do this by pressing the Restore button and moving it to where I'd like it. I'm going to put it in my right-hand corner and extend it down all the way to the bottom of the screen. Now, I'm going to take the same thing with my Chrome tab, and I'll just readjust it to the left-hand side of my screen. Alright, now that I've gotten this adjusted to my liking, I will go over one clearance with everyone just to show you how they are. So, in the VTitles application, I'm going to start here, and I'm going to clear American 1099. So, I see American 1099, I see all this information here. If for some reason I didn't see it here, or I wanted to see it within my CRC window to amend it, I can do a few things. The first thing I can do is press Control F on my keyboard and type in the call sign, American 1099. This will prompt the flight plan to appear in my flight plan editor. Another thing I can do to pull up the flight plan is press the period on my keyboard type FP, space, and the aircraft's call sign, so in this case American 1099, and that will open up the flight plan. Now, since I've been a controller here for a while, I know that this route and flight plan is already correct. Your mentor and instructor will teach you how to decipher if a route is correct or not. To clear someone within the VTDLS application, I'm first going to go ahead to the bottom corner where it says Departure Frequency, and set it to whatever the active departure frequency is. If your departure frequency is not listed here, for example, if center is working departure top down, you can click on the Bradley A in the top left hand corner. Under temporary departure frequencies, I'm gonna type in 134.7, which is the center frequency or whatever frequency you need to set as the departure frequency. And, under Override Departure Frequency, I'm going to select that 134.7 that I just entered. I can close out of this window, and as you can see, 134.7 has now appeared in my Departure Frequency window. So, in this example, we'll say that Center is controlling Departure Top Down. I will click on that. Everything else is correct, so I can click on Send. Now, to show you what a PDC looks like, you can take a look at this window to see that American 1099 has just received his PDC. The PDC verbiage for the facilities mentioned can be found in the facilities SOP. If we forget who we just issued a PDC to, we can see it right under the PDC window and they will be the bottom most 
aircraft in this list. Now that I've cleared American 1099, I'm going to come over to V strips to make sure that we get his strip up to date. Per the general SOP section 5.16 for flight strips, we have certain annotations that we have to use in these boxes on the right hand side. So in our strip bay, the first thing I'm going to do is come up to the printer. As you can see, 19 strips are waiting to be printed, so I will click on that. And since we just cleared American 1099, I'm going to search through, and look, he's second. I'm going to search through, I'm going to find him, press move to bay. Then I can close out of that printer window by pressing the escape key or clicking out of it. Now that American 1099 is cleared, the first thing I have to do is mark his strip. Since we cleared him via PDC, in box 1 of the flight strip, I'm going to type a C, as in Charlie. Now, some controllers like to utilize both racks of the strip bay to, utilize, to sort their strips, but for this case scenario, I'll only be using one, and I'll just leave him right at the top with the C indicated. Occasionally, in your strip printer, you will see strips that just say IFR KBDL. This means that the aircraft is an arrival. In our case here in BVA, there are no requirements for us to use these arrival flight strips. So in this case, we can simply delete them from the printer. Now I can close out of my printer. Now that is the basics on how to set up a CRC window, along with setting up V strips and VTDLS. Now let's go a little more in depth in our CRC ASDEX window to make sure we get the most out of all the features. The first thing that you can set is the day slash night mode. By clicking on day slash night, we can change it between two different color configurations. We can adjust the brightness of certain things. I'm not going to do that, but I will press done. The next thing, which is practically most important, is the safety logic. Now, in the safety logic, make sure that whenever the runway configuration is changed or you are logging on, you click on Runway Configuration, and we set it to the configuration. As we said, we're going to run Runway 6 and 33 for this example, so I'm going to press on that. Please also ensure that you test your volume prior to utilizing the safety logic by clicking on Safety Logic and the Volume Test button. If it is too loud, you can click on the volume and use your scroll wheel to adjust the volume as needed. Also make sure that under ARR alerts, we click that and we set them both to on so we can receive the alerts. Then we can press done. Now that we've finished setting up our ASD and we've gone through an example of how to give a clearance, I will press control S once more on my keyboard to save my profile. Now, when logging off a position after giving control to another controller, you will unactivate your session. To do this, go to the menu in the top left hand corner and press deactivate session. This can also be done with control shift F12. As you can see, we are back to square one, seeing no frequency listed next to local control, which is our position. To log out of the network, I'm going to press on the three lines again and click disconnect. This can also be done by pressing control and F12. As you can see, after logging out, I automatically get booted from V strips and V tittles because these are linked to your connection. The last thing we are going to cover in this video is signing in as an observer, setting up audio for VATSIM, and importing VATIS profiles to use VATIS. To sign in as an observer on the network, I'm going to go back to the three menu, press connect. My position is the position I'd like to observe, so I'm going to observe Bradley local control. Make sure that you set your role to observer to not interfere with active controlling operations. My rating is whatever my VATSIM rating is. And since we want to observe the live network, I'm going to press environment as live. Then I can press connect and I can see the traffic that is shown on the live network, as well as any ASD closures that can be found in the documentation of CRC for how to set these up.
Once I've gone ahead and connected as an observer, I can see myself under Observer's Bradley Local Control. The indication that it is you is if you are highlighted in blue. I can also see other controllers, such as Bradley Ground Control and Concord Boston Center, and I can also see the ATIS. You can access the ATIS by double-clicking on it, which will open a message with the ATIS, and you can see all of the ATIS currently hosted at the airport you're observing. Now, let's say I wanted to observe the VTittles and VStrips. Under VTittles, I'm going to log out. Since I'm no longer in Sweatbox 2, I'm going to press log out, switch to live, and press login with Vatsim once again. I can click Bradley, as shown before, and now I can observe the live network. Same thing with VStrips, I can press log out, switch to live, and press login. Then, I'm connected to the live network, and I can actively see the strips. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is audio for VATSIM. So, we can head over to our downloads folder, where we installed audio for VATSIM, and set it up as we'd set up a normal application. I've already gotten it installed, so I've gone ahead and opened it up. The first thing I'm going to need to do is head over to settings. I'm going to make sure that I set everything up properly by setting my CID, my password, setting my microphone, my headset, my optional speaker device, and I can play around with my volumes. As you can see, I wanted to adjust my volume so my voice regularly stays within the green area and it doesn't go all the way up to the red. I've done that here. One thing I forgot to mention when making this video is to make sure you set your push to talk. I've put an arrow there facing where the push to talk goes, so then you can transmit on the frequency that you will be controlling. Once you've done this, you can press apply and OK. The next thing we need to do to observe communications is press connect. Once we press connect, we will be connected to the live network. You can confirm that by seeing your CID underscore observer as an observer, or you'll see whatever position you are signed in as. Here at BVA, we have custom transceivers, so you will need to add the custom transceiver. In this case, we are observing Bradley local control, so I'm going to press the plus sign right here, type in BDL underscore TWR, which is the Bradley Tower call sign, and I'm going to add a hyphen afterwards. This can be done with any position you would like to listen to. It's the same three digits for the airport code, the three digit identifier for the position you are observing, and the hyphen afterwards. I'm then going to press the check mark. As you can see, I get Bradley Tower and any other various Bradley positions that might be linked. If you don't see all the positions, two pages will come up. You can use these arrow keys to switch between those pages. Since I want to observe Bradley Tower, I'm going to press RX, which means receive on the Bradley Tower frequency. Now I can disable the RX from my observer, clicking that, and you will always want to disable RX or TX if it's enabled on this first one. The only thing you should have RX and TX enabled on are the position that you are using. Do not enable TX until you are actively controlling the frequency. RX is safe to enable so you can hear what is going on. Now, just so I don't have to leave my audio for VATSIM this big, I can press this up hour arrow key. To the left of my X, I can press the up arrow, which will condense the audio for VATSIM into one little window. I can place that wherever I'd like. Once I'm done observing or controlling on the network, I can press Disconnect. The last application we will set up during this tutorial is VATIS, which is used for creating ATISs as a controller. So we can head back over to our downloads folder to VATIS and open that up. I already have it installed. The next thing I'm going to do is come over to the BVA underscore VATIS folder that we downloaded off the ATC hub and we're going to have to extract this. I use WinRAR to extract my zip files, but you can use the built-in extraction tool. To extract this on Windows 11, I'm going to right-click on the folder, 
show more options, extract all. I'm going to choose the folder where I would like to extract my folder to and press the extract button. Once this is finished, I will have my folder opened and you can see we have all the VITAS files that we may need. I will now close out of these and open up the newly installed VATIS window. The first thing I'm going to do is press import on VATIS to import the current ATIS files that we just downloaded. I'm going to go where I extracted the folder, double click it, click it once more, and I'm going to scroll down to Y90, which is Yankee Tracon, which is what overlies Bradley. I'm going to click that and press open. Once I've gone ahead and imported the Y90 profile, I can easily double click on the Y90 to open it up. Next thing I'm going to do, as we've done for every application, is click on the settings window and enter in all the information that we may need to enter here, such as our name, our VATSIM CID, password, rating, the server, keep at automatic, and then we can press save settings. Now, as you can see here, we have a couple airports. These are all the airports in the Bradley Tracon. Here, we're only concerned about Bradley, so I'm going to press on KBDL. Next thing I'm going to do, we can click on the drop down window to find which configuration we are running. As we've been sticking with for our entire training, we will be running 6 and 3.3. 3. Now, please only press the connect button if you are actively controlling on the network. Since I'm only observing, I'm not going to press this connect button. Once you do press connect, you will see the ATIS typed here, the altimeter over here, and the ATIS letter here. To change the ATIS letter, you can click with your left mouse button to increment it upwards and right click to increment it downwards. You may only do this once the ATIS is connected. Keep in mind that VATIS will automatically update the letter when the weather changes. You will hear a beeping sound and the A will start flashing. To update it, you simply click on it, which will increment it to the next ATIS letter. Now, for more information on recording a voice ATIS, which has to be done at all airports except for Albany, Bradley, Boston, and Providence, since those are digital, I'll send it over to mentor Andrew, who has a demonstration on how to record an ATIS at the Nantucket Airport. Hi everyone, my name is Andrew, and today I'll be going over how to record an ATIS at Nantucket Airport. When you first open up the ATIS, it will open up with this in a blank window, and that's okay. The first thing you want to do is come down to this down arrow here and select the profile for the airport that you're working. In this instance, Nantucket only has one profile, and I'm just going to select that. That will fill in the airport conditions window here with the last approaches and runways in use. I'm going to keep this the same. It actually works quite well for the ATIS we'll be recording. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this connect button here, and that will connect the ATIS client to the VATSIM network. Once I'm connected to the network, it pulls the weather information. This is the current METAR for Nantucket. You have the station identifier, the date and time, the wind, the visibility, the cloud clearances, temperature, dew point, and altimeter. It also has a remark section, but there isn't anything in this remark section that we need to put in the ATIS, so we're just not going to worry about it right now. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click the record ATIS button here. That opens up a new window with the ATIS script right here. This is what you will be reading off of if you are having trouble recording one. It has all the information that you need. It also has the ability to set up a listening device and a sound device. If it's different than your Windows default, you can set it up to however your computer system is set up for microphone and sound devices. To start recording, you're going to press the Start Recording button here, and this is what the Nantucket ATIS is going to sound like. Nantucket Airport Information Alpha, 19053 Zulu, Wind 36010, Visibility 8, 1100 Scattered, Ceiling 6000 Overcast, Temperature 5, Dew Point 3, Altimeter 2981, Visual Approaches in Use, Landing and Departing Runway 6 and Runway 33. Hazardous weather information for the New England area available upon request. 
by zone initial contact, you have information alpha. Now I took a couple seconds of pause at the end of that recording just to add in a little bit of dead space. Otherwise, once that recording ends, it would immediately start playing over again. So you want to add a little bit of dead time at the end, two to three seconds is good enough. Once you're done with the recording, you want to listen to it. And this is important because if it sounds wrong or if it's a bit choppy, uh, then pilots aren't going to understand the recording. So if you want to listen to it, you just press this listen button here. And let's take a listen to make sure it sounds okay. Nantucket Airport Information Alpha, 19053 Zulu, wind 36010, visibility 8, 1100 scattered, ceiling 6000 overcast, temperature 5, dew point 3, altimeter 2981, visual approaches in use, landing and departing runway 6 and runway 33, hazardous weather information for the New England area available upon request, by on initial contact you have information Alpha. There you go. That sounded pretty good. So now I'm going to press the save button here to save the recording. And here you'll see this button automatically turn green. It has automatically started broadcasting the recording on the network. And there you go. That's how you record an ATIS with VATIS. Thank you, Andrew. Now that we've finished configuring VATIS, we can close out of this and press exit to close out of the application. And now that we're finished observing, once more, I'm going to go to the menu and press on disconnect. Yes. As you can see, whenever we do disconnect from a control position, we automatically get removed from VTDLS and VStrips. You must be logged into the network or the sweatbox to access both of these applications. The last piece of software I would like to mention before leaving you today is the IDS software located at ids.bvartcc.com. Once pressing login with VATSIM in the right hand side, you will be directed to this page with your name in the top left corner to confirm you've logged in successfully. The IDS software allows you to put multiple pieces of information on one screen for easy access during your controlling session. More in-depth details about the IDS software can be found by pressing the question mark in the top right hand corner. To put it simply and go over a few of the things you can do in the IDS, first we'll press the plus sign in the top right hand corner. We'll be greeted with a page where we can add different modules. First, we'll go over the airport information module. By pressing this, I'll be prompted with a page to enter the airport that I would like to see information for. For example, if I enter the Bradley code and press enter, I will be greeted with the Bradley METAR, ATIS, and all the other pertinent information. Keep in mind that the ATIS letters automatically updated via VATIS, but the landing and departing runways are not. To update this, you can press the edit button in the top right corner and enter all the information that you may need to enter. If you press the box next to subscribe, you will receive audio notifications on your computer every time the ATIS letter is updated. Another important module that you can use within the IDS software is the preferred routes. By clicking this, you are prompted with the same thing that will result if you go to the ATC hub, press on controlling, and then click on preferred routes. This is just a simplified method in the IDS. This will show you preferred routes to whatever airport you enter. So for example, from Boston to Bradley, pressing enter, will provide me the list of all the routes that I can see in the preferred route database. Another useful thing in the IDS is the aircraft lookup which will allow you to see information about any sort of aircraft type. All of these modules are very useful. Feel free to test them out and see what works for you. Alrighty, thank you for joining me today on our CRC introduction video, also outlining audio for VATSIM, VATIS, VSTRIPS, and VTDLS. Keep in mind that this video was filmed in January of 2024, and procedures may have updated since then. Keep in mind to always follow the general SOP and the air traffic control handbook for updated procedures. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us via our TeamSpeak or our Discord server. Thank you for watching and have a great day.